just to be able to stand here in front of you is my small miracle. You see, all my life I've had a real phobia about public speaking, a proper full-on phobia with all the symptoms. Now, this isn't a good thing, but when you're supposed to be making your living as a communications professional, that will be me, it's a very bad thing, very awkward, and actually very often very embarrassing. The good news is that a few years ago I met some people and had some experiences that just changed everything. Now I've got to tell you that I am the luckiest bloke that you know, without any question of a doubt. I had a great upbringing, I've got a wonderful family, laughter, love, good health, great friends, loads of opportunities, and I got to be born Dutch. I had the most amazing career as a journalist and editor, and what a job that was. And then I got to start my own public relations agency, which is just a massive privilege. I got to build a brand, I got to build a reputation, I got to create a fantastic team, and I got to work for some amazing clients on some equally amazing projects. The best bit of luck I've ever had, though, is finally to discover what my purpose is in life, why I'm here. The saying that the two most important days in your life are the day you're born and then the day you find out why. Now, I had to wait and I was 60 to find out my why, and that was five years ago. Some of the less charitable amongst you might be thinking to yourselves, well, you left that a bit late, old chum. <laughs> well, perhaps you're right and perhaps I did, but you know what? That's actually the beauty of it. Now, despite all this great stuff I've been sharing with you, I have to say that throughout my life, I always had a sense that there was something not quite right. Couldn't really put my finger on it. It was just that niggle up here that there was something missing. You might recognize that niggle. It's that niggle that won't go away. It's that niggle that keeps you awake at night. It's a niggle that makes you anxious, but you don't quite know why. But what you do know is that there should be more to your life than there is. Now, I've admired an awful lot of people in my life I've only ever envied one, and he's my best mate, John. Now, my best mate, John, knew from the age of 10 what his destiny was, and that was to be a doctor, and that's exactly what he became. I was always in awe of this. I mean, just imagine getting up every morning and going out to do something that you know you're supposed to be doing with your life. That's what I wanted my life to feel like, desperately. But as the years went by, I slowly came to terms with the fact but that probably wasn't going to happen to me. Happily, I was wrong. I was about 20 years into running my business when another friend of mine suggested out of the blue that it might be a good idea if I met his mentor. Now, I was really surprised by that. Here was a bloke I really admired for being clever, for being really successful, and for being an, an amazing public speaker. And I find out that he's got a mentor. That was a surprise. And why did he think that then was a good time to raise it? After all, I was in my late 50s by then and probably a bit too old as I saw it to be changing uh, my ways or learning any new tricks. The name of that mentor was Alan Mullet. Alan was just one of the most amazing people I've ever met and as a journalist I got to meet an awful lot of amazing people. Everything that I have become, all the success that my business has achieved, the difficult decisions I made, the life I now lead, the fact that I'm actually stood here in front of you today is entirely down to my mate, Alan Mullet. To be fair, when I met Alan, I already thought that I had it all. I had the house, I had the business, I had a great family, I had the things. But Alan, with his amazing perception, it only took him about five minutes to make me see the real picture of my life and what my life had really become. I had actually lost sight of who I was my life had become a performance. I'd lost all my authenticity. I was making a life, a living, but I wasn't really making a life. I had actually created a life that I thought others expected of me, rather than a life that was true to myself. I'd been watching my kids, but not really seeing them. I'd been listening to the people I love, but actually not really hearing them. I was too distracted, you see. I'd spent years at home pacing the floor at night, often and for hours on end. I'd be worrying about the mortgage, I'd be worrying about the kids, worrying about where the next piece of work was coming from. 
And in the next, the next morning, I'd often find myself sat in front of a potential client thinking, now what can I do or say to make you give me your business? That right there is what grasping for short-term commercial gain actually looks like. Now, I was regularly at the office seven days a week, often until the early hours. I thought I had to be. I thought that that was my duty to get the work, to do the work, to invoice the work, and then to make the mortgage payment, and then endlessly repeat that cycle. That right there was the life that became my normal, and I actually believed I was happy living it. It is particularly frightening to think how easy it is that we can all get so very lost so very quickly without even knowing it. Um, Alan came onto the scene and Alan showed me what was real and what wasn't real. He made me understand what my life and thinking had become and he showed me what they could be. And I think right there is when for me the penny actually dropped. I kind of got it. For all those years it had been about grasping for short term commercial gain. It was about business and not about people. Actually that wasn't making anybody happy, it wasn't making the clients happy, wasn't making us happy and it certainly wasn't making our families happy. So I got to thinking, what if we did this completely differently? What if we stopped grasping at the office? What if we actually started looking at our clients just as people, people like us, people with hopes, people with fears, people with challenges? looking at them in that way instead of looking at them as sources of income? What if we made it our mission to actually help those people, to add value to those people, to make a difference to their lives? If we did that with real commitment and real authenticity, would we still have a business? Would we still be able to make a living? Well, right there, I was absolutely convinced that we would. I had absolutely no doubt. Every fibre of my body told me that this was the right thing to do. This was not idealism, people, at all. I had bills to pay like everybody else. This was about a fundamental decision about how we wanted to work, how we wanted to feel, and how we wanted to live as a team. These weren't just values that we talked about. We weren't playing at it. These weren't clever words in fancy frames on the office wall there just to impress our visitors and our clients. We lived and breathed every minute of this to the point at which we would decline work if it didn't feel right to us. And we parted company with some massive lucrative clients who we'd always realized had never been right for us, or we for them, but we'd never been honest enough actually to admit it. The other thing we decided to do is never to work for any clients that we didn't respect and like as people, people who at some level shared our value set and for whom we knew we could deliver proper results. Now, I grant you that these were fairly risky strategies on the face of it. And what you're probably wanting to know now is, were we totally deluded? Was this folly? Were we just talking self-indulgent nonsense? Or did we have something? Did any of this actually work? Actually, it did work. We did still make a living. We did still have a business. We didn't, did win a lot of work. Our existing clients actually increased their spend with us. They trusted us in a way that they'd never trusted us before. They actually referred us to a lot of other clients. We won some more awards, and we were inundated with applications from new people who actually wanted to be part of the way that we were doing things. Now, it was interesting that our clients felt differently about it. They were actually buying into something more than the service that they were paying for. It was no longer a commercial relationship. It actually became an emotional relationship, and they tend to be the ones that actually last. Keeping a business going and growing is absolutely everything. We absolutely believed with total conviction that the way we were doing things could actually achieve those aims. In fact, we believed this was really the only way of delivering the level of sustainability for a business that a business really needs to survive. So I just loved what we were doing. I loved the buzz we were creating internally and externally, and I just wanted to tell people about it. But here was the bloke who couldn't stand up in front of more than two strangers at a time, so that wasn't going to happen anytime soon. The thing about phobias is, 
it's easier to embrace them and work around them than it is to deal with them. And mine was so ingrained and had been for so very long that I wasn't really in a hurry to want to do anything about it. I think what changed it for me was just the sheer depth of conviction and passion I had for doing what we were doing. It was seeing the changes in the people around me. It was seeing the changes in me, the reactions from the family, and the reactions from the clients as well. So I had a word with myself. I came to an arrangement with myself, and I set my intentions to tackle my demon. I am a big believer in setting intentions, and I don't believe in coincidence. And guess what? A couple of months later, out of the blue, or maybe not, I get an invitation to go and talk to 40 university business graduates about what it was like to run a business. Happy days. Prayers answered. What an opportunity. Great. Obviously, I said no, because I didn't, <laughs> because I didn't do that kind of thing, did I? That was just not me, because I had a phobia. But hang on a minute. Isn't that what I set my intentions to do? So I said yes, and I said thank you. And I began to feel very, very queasy, much as I do now when I'm just thinking about the story. A few weeks later, the day of the talk arrived. Uh, I parked up in a car park, and every step from the car park to the venue was this epic struggle against the almost overwhelming urge to want to turn around and run. And I have done that. I have done that. I'll spare you the rest of the symptoms. Suffice it to say <laughs> that it was the longest 10-minute walk of my life, Green Mile. But I didn't run away. I didn't run away. I got to the venue, signed in, lift. I got to the lecture theater, walked in, saw a sea of faces, and prepared to die. I didn't die. The two most important days of your life are the day that you're born and the day that you find out why. That was the day that I found my why. The energy, the atmosphere, the feedback, the engagement, the comments from the lecturers, the emails I got the following morning, I, I, indescribable, nothing that had ever happened to me before. And saying that, I've just had loads of highlights, of course, professionally in my life. I have loved every minute of every year that I have run my agency. But I've got to tell you that I went home that night feeling for the first time in years that I'd actually made a difference to other people. And I can't tell you what that looked like. I knew then that that was how I wanted the rest of my life to look like. And that's what I set out to do. So, I think it was about 18 months ago that I actually left my agency. I left it in extremely good hands, and I went out there to go and fulfill my passion and my purpose. And I now spend my time sharing what I've learned and experienced with business people and teams who find themselves in that same place where I found myself. Lives get changed in the process, and what an absolute privilege it is for me to do what I do. So as I said to you, I really am the luckiest bloke that you know. Here's some of the stuff that I've learned. I've learned that it really isn't ever too late to learn a new trick. I've learned that it really isn't ever too late to find a true passion or purpose in life. I've learned that it really is possible to run a sustainable, successful and profitable business when you put putting a difference above making money. And I've also learned that real passion can overcome even the greatest fear. But I'll tell you what probably the best lesson of all has been for me, that we have each of us in us the immense capacity to make a difference to the lives of other people. So how many lives are you going to make a difference to? Thank you.